Shock Suspense Stories for Crying Out Loud. Go ahead, Marty. Finish the job. You've got to now. Kill her. Tighten your fingers around her soft white throat. Squeeze tighter. Tighter. Squeeze till you choke off her screams. Squeeze till she stops clawing at you. Squeeze till her lungs stop heaving and her eyes roll back. Blind, white, and her curvaceous body goes limp. All right, Marty, it's done. You can stop now. You're just squeezing the neck of a corpse. Now she's dead. Well, don't just stand there looking stupid. You've committed murder. You've got to get out of here, but fast. Yeah, gotta get away before somebody comes along. Got to. That's it, Marty. Run. Run from the scene of the crime. Run from your sickening, filthy deed. You're safe, Marty. No witnesses. No one to talk to. No one to, to... Wait, what's that, Marty? What are you saying? I killed her. I killed Millie Pelson. I killed... Shut up, Marty. Don't say those things. Somebody will hear you. What? You're not saying those things. Well, you heard it, didn't you? You heard that accusing voice inside your brain now, don't you? Screaming louder, louder. I strangled her. I murdered her with my own bare hands. I killed. No, no. That's the way, Marty. Argue with that stupid squealing voice. Answer it back. Explain. Shut it up. I'm a murderer. I, but I had to kill her. I had to protect myself. I had to. Sure you had to, Marty, boy. Not. Of course. Certainly. What else could you do? Especially considering the circumstances drifting into that bar earlier this evening. Looking for some fun for a change. Tired of being cooped up in that lousy hotel room. This looks like a quiet place. Hmm. Nice babe. Giving me the eye, too. It had been a long time, eh, Marty? A long time of hiding out. A long time without a drink. A long time without someone like her. So you wasted no time. You saw your chance and you grabbed at it. You've always done that, Marty. Haven't you, Marty? Hello, honey. You look lonesome. Mind if a lonesome guy joins you? Can I buy you the next one? Sure, handsome. Sit down. I've got the evening to kill. My name's Millie. Millie Belson. What's yours? You were clever, Marty. You were no dope. Your name had been in every paper in town a few weeks ago. You were careful not to use it. Uh, Joe Smith, I'm from out of town. Two more of those, bartender. Yes, sir. That was an uh idiotic mistake, wasn't it, Marty? Flashing that roll of bills. You didn't even notice how Millie started looking you over. One... 160. Take it out of this. Say, mister, what's your middle name, Will Heald? You don't notice that sign of recognition in her face. You drank and she drank. You laugh and she laughed. And when she asked you that exciting question... How would you like to take me home, Martin? Sounds like a great idea, Millie. You fell like a ton of bricks. What an idiotic fool you were. You fell right to her trap. She wasn't letting you take her home. She wasn't taking you anywhere. She just wanted to take you. <laughs> That's what I thought. Joe, you answered to Martin without batting an eyelash. You're Martin Borderman, the embezzler. What? 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 Uh, there was no use stammering around, Marty. No use wishing you hadn't taken a chance and crawled out of your hole before it had all blown over. She recognized you. You were trapped. Thank you, Marty. So, I won't be greedy. The paper said you got away with 40 grand cold cash. Only 25 grand will keep my soft, sweet lips shut. Why are you cheap chiseling? It was a waste of an evicted talent. Those names you called her, Marty. She didn't even budge one penny. And suddenly, you saw red. All right, Platty. Risking my neck, sweating blood, and you want to cut yourself in for more than a half? You, a tramp, a crumb, only met an hour ago. Wait, keep away. We, we can buy you. Sure, Marty, like you said, you had to do it. You had to protect yourself. Had to cover up one crime with another. But this other thing, the this voice echoing in your brain. This maddening voice you didn't figure on. I killed a woman. I killed Millie Belson. She's back there in an alley. Dead. No, no, stop it. Stop it. Stop. The screaming voice confessing your sin, shouting out your guilt louder, louder, until you can swear it's echoing off the buildings and somebody, anybody can oh, hear no, no, no. Shut up. Shut up. Somebody's coming, Marty, and that voice won't be still. Careful now. Compose yourself. Put on a poker face. That's it. There. 
You look like an average man out for a smoke. I killed a woman. I killed. I killed. God's for sake, Marty. He's staring at you. He hears. He hears that crazy screaming voice in your brain. No. It can't be. I killed her. I'm a killer. Listen. I murdered. Of course it can't be, Marty. It's ridiculous. How can anybody hear a voice that's in your own mind? Impossible. Of course. Certainly. But why is he staring at you? Do, do I look, look guilty? I, I, I am guilty. I kill, I kill. Say, mister. Run, Marty. Run. He does hear you. Run. There. He's left far behind. Slow down. Walk. Watch the passerby. Watch their faces. Here comes one. He won't hear. He can't. He... Oh, no. I'm guilty. I strangled. Listen, mister, you ought to... Run, Marty. Run some more. Run from yourself. Run from that vile deed and your screaming conscience. I'm a killer. Ah, oh, come on, Marty. This is childish. This is uncanny. How can anyone hear your own guilty conscience? Now, wait a while. Let's think this over. That man looking in that store window. Fucking kid. Let's be sure. Let's make the acid test. Stand beside him. Look into the window. See if he hears. See. I follow the woman. I killed her in cold blood. I am a murderer. He does hear. He must hear. They all hear. See how he spins around, staring at you in wide-eyed horror. Good lord, mister. Keep away. It's true, Marty. Your guilty mind is betraying you, screaming out for all to hear, branding you as a killer. Your lips are sealed tight, but the voice of your conscience is loud and clear. Mister, why? I choked you to death. Run. Run away. But where? Where can you run? That voice is with you always. Now you've had it. Look who's coming. A cop. He'll hear. He'll hear for sure. Lord, what do I do? What? Stop. Boy, Marty. Quick thinking, kid. Cover up by hanging on the pole and singing in that loud, nauseating baritone voice, drowning out the other. All right. Move along before I run you in. And quiet down. You were lucky, Marty, but you may not be as lucky next time. What are you going to do? How can you drown out this stool pigeon voice from your brain so people won't hear? How? Listen, what's that racket? Of course, look at the sign. Acme Boiler Factory. Help wanted. Night shift only. Apply at office. It'll give me a chance to relax and think this thing out. I'll apply. Smart boy, Marty. The din in this place certainly will drown out that babbling confession point from your conscience's big fat mouth. Go ahead in. What <laughs> noise? Listen to that hideous, heavily racket, that ear splitting perpetual hammering and booming. It's music, isn't it, Marty? You can hardly hear that voice now. This is the place to be. All right. I... <sighs> now where's the office? Oh, yes. There it is. You start across the noisy factory floor toward the office. The hammering thunders around you. And then suddenly, the hammering stops. The din subsides. What the? The factory is silent. Dead silent. <laughs> and that voice, that crazy, idiotic, stupid voice screams out through the silence. Oh my God. Really bullshit. I strangled her. I'm a murderer. And they look at you, the workers. They stare at you. They come toward you silently. All right, all right. I admit it. I'm a killer. I'm a murderer. You can't stand it any longer. You open your mouth, scream out your confession, watch their surprise expression change in the silence. I'm Martin Boardman. I'm wanted by the police, and I just strangled a Millie Belson. You find her body in an alley. The silence, Marty. The silence is still there. You don't even hear your own voice. I'm a murderer. I, I. Somebody call a cop. Yeah. You don't even hear your own confession and the noises of the factory, Marty. They didn't stop. You didn't have to spill your secret. You didn't have to. I'm deaf. Oh Lord. I'm deaf. What's going on? It's a policeman, Marty. You see him, but you don't hear his voice. You don't hear the boiler factory workers tell him. A couple of us seen him come in. We took one look in, at him and started towards him. And he started screaming, he killed this dame. You don't hear the reason why everybody stared at you, Marty. It wasn't because anyone heard your conscience that was inside you. All we wanted to do was tell him that he ought to take care of those scratches on his face. They look pretty bad. 
scratches on your face, Marty. Millie's clawing had done it, and you were bleeding. That's what everybody was staring at. Marty, 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 do you hear? The end. If you thought that tale turned your stomach, maybe you should consider subscribing to the 9 to 5 Outlaw Reviews YouTube channel for more comics come alive. EC edition featuring me, the Crib Keeper, the Old Witch, and the Vault Keeper, as well as other stories in the EC family, including crime suspense stories, shock suspense stories, weird science, and weird fantasy. Or you can just sit on your hands. Take your choice. <laughs> Bye for now.